Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome back to my Logic Pro 11 Essentials course. In this video, we're going to focus on recording electric guitar and bass, and I'll show you two different methods of doing this. One method is going straight into an instrument level input on your audio interface and using an amp sim to model your amp tone. Or two, you can record with a real amplifier. Before we get any deeper into the video, I need to quickly tell you about today's sponsor, Boombox. Boombox is a revolutionary new standard for musicians, producers, and engineers. They take file storage, collaboration, networking, and creative tools and pack them all into a single platform. With Boombox, you get secure file storage for your tracks, stems, multi-tracks, and even full DAW sessions. You can invite collaborators to your projects and even create Create your own custom inboxes for clients to upload their files directly to your Boombox account. You can network with other musicians and artists by creating a custom artist page for yourself, list yourself as available for hire, browse other artists to collaborate with, and create shareable playlists. Boombox has also jumped into the world of AI with Boombot AI, your personal assistant producer that can assist you in writing lyrics, generating MIDI musical ideas, splitting stems, and more. If you want to check out Boombox for yourself, head over to boombox.io today and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage. So let's talk about the first method, going DI and using amp sims, since it's the simpler method and probably the most preferred method for home studio enthusiasts. DI means direct input or direct injection. This is a super easy and efficient way to make guitar recordings in a home studio because you're only recording the clean DI signal of your guitar and you can change out the amp sim plugin and play around with different amp tones in mixing after you've already recorded your parts. If your audio interface has an instrument level input, you can plug your guitar or bass directly into your audio interface. These are sometimes labeled high Z inputs, which means high impedance. You wouldn't want to plug your guitar directly into a microphone input or a line level input because there will be an impedance mismatch and this will make your recording not sound so great. You'll end up with a bad recording or you'll end up with the wrong amount of gain or added distortion and noise in your recording. So if your interface does have instrument level inputs, make sure to switch the input over to instrument level, not mic and not line. If your audio interface does not have instrument level inputs, you can use a direct box or DI box. Just plug your guitar or pedal board directly into the direct box and then plug an XLR cable from the direct box into a microphone level input on your audio interface. A direct box will step down the instrument level signal from your guitar or bass to a mic level signal. So just keep in mind that if you do have an instrument input, you will likely not need to add that much gain or any gain at all on the channel. Whereas if you're using a direct box, you might need to push up the mic gain a bit on the channel. Just make sure you're getting a healthy signal level on input because the higher the gain, the more your DI guitar recordings are going to drive the amp sim. And I don't mean like distortion or overdrive. I mean that a weak DI signal is going to result in a weak and thin sounding guitar amp tone. Setting up Logic for this is super easy. Just create a new audio track. There's even a special guitar or bass audio track that loads up a bunch of effects that you'll typically use on guitar, including a noise gate to gate out any hum, the pedal board if you want to add some pedal effects, amp designer, which is Logic's built-in amp sim plugin, and some other effects as well. If you don't want to deal with all of that, you can also just create a blank mono audio track and set the input you're recording into and load up Amp Designer. When you record enable or input monitor the track, you'll be able to audition the amp type and tone in Amp Designer. I'll find a nice crunch tone here. In addition, you can adjust any of the amp settings you like. You can mix and match different amps and speaker cabinets, and you can even change the type of microphone and position of the microphone on the speaker. And again, all of this can be fully customized after you've already recorded your parts because you're only recording the clean DI signal of your guitar. Recording this way is super easy. Just make sure you have the track record enabled, but not input monitored. Set your playhead where you want the recording to start and hit R to record. 
Just like when we made some vocal recordings, you can pack your takes into a take folder and then use quick swipe comping later on to create a perfect take. One thing I like to do anytime I record rhythm guitar parts is I like to record two takes on two different tracks, and then I can pan these left and right to get a wider and richer sounding guitar tone. Just keep in mind that you cannot simply duplicate a track and get the same effect. These must be different recordings because it's the slight variations in the two recordings that creates the stereo effect. Going DI is really great for electric bass. I think it's been years since I used a real bass amp in the studio. The process is exactly the same as recording DI guitar. Just load up bass amp designer instead of amp designer. And one thing I didn't mention earlier is that Logic actually has a built-in tuner. So just simply record enable or input monitor a track, click here to open the tuner, and then tune up your guitar or bass. All right, let's lay down a bass groove. I'm probably not going to be able to play as well as the session bass player that I added in the previous video, but I'll do my best. Next, let's talk about recording with a real guitar amp. For this, you'll need a guitar amp and at least one microphone. Although the placement of microphones and the number of mics you use is going to change the tone of your guitar recordings drastically. Here, we're not gonna focus too much on different miking techniques, because that could be a whole course on its own, but I will touch on my particular setup I'm using in this video and my particular mics and miking technique. Also, if your guitar amp is being recorded in a separate room from where your Logic setup is, you might need to have an assistant to operate Logic for you, but there is a way around this that'll explain in just a bit. For my amp, I'm using a Hughes & Kettner Grandmeister 36. I'm also using an SE guitar reflection filter, although this is not required by any means. I just find it helps to keep some of the reflections from the room out of the recording. I'm using a Shure SM57 dynamic mic paired with an AEA N22 active ribbon mic. Typically with ribbon mics, you don't want or need phantom power, but because this is an active ribbon, I'll make sure to turn on phantom power for this. I'm gonna be placing the SM57 slightly off center from the center of the speaker cone. That'll help tame some of the harsher high end. And because the N22 is a ribbon mic, it's much warmer than the SM57. So I'll be placing this directly in the center of the speaker cone. I've also made sure to keep the distance of the mics to the speaker the same to reduce any phase cancellation. But with guitar miking, there is a whole art to varying the distance and angle of microphones to achieve different tones. So experiment a little bit and find a sweet spot that works for you. 
I have the SM57 going into input three and the N22 going into input four on my audio interface, but I have one more part of the equation here that's totally optional. My amp is in the next room, but I'm going to be playing over here in this room, in my control room. So I don't have to have an assistant to operate logic and I don't need to wear headphones. I don't need to bring a headphone amp over to the other room or anything like that. That's the upside to this, but it does make the signal flow of my setup a bit more complicated. What I'm doing is I'm running my guitar into a direct box that has a pass through and the pass through is going to the amp in the next room. And then I'm also feeding an XLR cable from the direct box back into my audio interface on channel two. This will record a completely clean DI signal of the guitar in addition to the two channels of microphones I have on the amp. Now this is great for reamping later, or maybe I wanna try out some other amp sims instead of using my amp. So this just gives me a clean backup to work with in case I decide I don't like my guitar tone later on in the process. So the logic setup here is gonna be a little more complex because at least in my setup, I'm recording three channels of audio at once. When you make multi-channel recordings, I find that using Logic's groups are a huge help. Groups allow multiple tracks to have shared parameters or linked parameters. For example, if I wanted to be able to mute three tracks all at once, I could put them in a group and set mute as one of its settings, one of its parameters. So when I mute one track, it mutes all three. If I unmute that one track, it unmutes all three. So groups can be applied to just about any track parameter, including mute, solo, input monitor, record enable, volume, pan, and even editing. So here you can see I have my DI track input two, my SM57 track input three, and my N22 track input four. I'm gonna select all three of these tracks in the mixer and then click here on my group slot and I'll assign all three of these to group one. Next, I'll go over to the inspector here and you can see the groups are active. You can actually quickly disable or enable all groups by pressing shift G. Let's double click on group one and give it a name. I'll call this guitar one. And then I'm going to open the settings. And what I like to use is editing, input, and record. All of the others I turn off because I don't want these to be linked or grouped. What this means is if I edit an audio recording on one track, it will edit all three tracks. If I input monitor or record enable one track, it will input monitor or record enable all tracks in the group. So next what I do is I just record enable the group and hit R to record. And then just like with single track recording, you can use take folders and quick swipe comping. As long as you have the editing setting turned on for the group, quick swipe comping will edit all three tracks at the same time. Okay, so that's how you can record electric guitar and bass in Logic Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.